Welcome, everybody, to Night of the Nerdy Laser Podcast, episode 88, and we are talking about American Mary from 2012. I am your host, Richard Body Modification Yule. <laughs> and I'm Jeff Lamb. Jeff, right now, I wish I could modify my body because there is a kidney stone right inside me trying to get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that feels good. Um, well, I was in the ER yesterday morning um, because I was in the most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my entire life. And apparently it was on my left side. So if something ever, if y'all get, this is your appendix, right side. Left side is apparently where your kidney is and where the stone breaks loose. And while it's getting from there to like there, <laughs> um, yeah, that is very painful. Now that it's there, it's it's uncomfortable, but I'm not in excruciating pain like that. I mean, I work at this hospital that I went to in the ER, so I knew everybody. I am <laughs> openly weeping. <laughs> <laughs> openly weeping because I'm in so much pain. <laughs> really, like, could you stop that? <laughs> dude, they, dude, they gave me morphine and it did nothing but make me feel like my limbs were floating. But I was still, it, it was the weirdest feeling. Like my arms and legs were like floating off my body. But I mean, it did nothing to the pain that I felt. So like 30 minutes after the morphine, I'm still, I mean, I'm, it, it got worse after the morphine. Yeah. Like, and so that's when I started to openly sob. Oh, and they yeah. got me a uh, Toradol, which... Hit the spot. <laughs> there you go. And actually, they say Toradol with kidney stones, their finding makes more sense than morphine. Because the Toradol does some medical thing to your whatever. Uh, so, yeah, that's been my past couple of days. So now I'm just a ticking time bomb with this thing about to erupt out of my wiener and <laughs> cause probably even more pain than I felt yesterday, which is terrifying. Well, you'll have to let us know on uh, episode. Oh, eight. I'll keep an update. Yeah, I'll make, I'll make a YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and well, while you've been doing that, I've been playing through Resident Evil 2. So, yeah. man, what a good game. I love it. I don't know if I ever played 2 or 3. I think I probably played 2. But it was one of those, like, times in history that will never happen again. That, like, you know, I would go over to my buddy's house and we would drink and we <laughs> would just switch the controller back and forth, like, and play a little bit here and there. Yeah. So it was, that's, it was the best. That's why two, I think, is my favorite. I mean, one's good, obviously. Uh, I like them all, even the bad ones. I was just telling Peyton, my friend, but, uh, you know, we grew up with that. So basically, I'd have the, he was the co pilot and I was the pilot. He'd, he'd come over and lay on the floor. And just read like page after page after page of the okay, Prima strategy like, guide. Strategy guide, and I awesome. run through, and he, you know, and he'd watch, and it was fun. We 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 did that with a lot of games growing up. Obviously, times were different because you could just you'd have to be at your friend's house to now, play okay. together. Basically, yeah. um, now it's just do whatever you want wherever you want. But yeah, I think just from playing that so much back then, and then they made the remake or the remaster or whatever of it. And it's good. They changed the story a little bit, but nothing to the point where it's like bad. So it's pretty well, fun. I've heard four is almost the remake. The remaster of four is almost like a completely different game. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, yeah. They, they say they've changed enough to where it, it really is like just a new resident evil game. Yeah. And that's, that's, I was telling you, that's why I was playing two again. So I could, Get used to being around Leon because <laughs> he's our main uh, protagonist in four as well. So, but yeah, good game. Good. Well, time. that's an update on the life. Jeff's life is much more fun than mine right now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're, uh, but I was able to, so obviously I'm such a sucker because like, you know, this happened at 5 a.m. yesterday morning. So, yeah. like, I'm getting ready to go to work, and I'm like, well, I'll just take my scrubs, and I can just go to work after I get seen. 
or whatever. And I'll just work through the pain and like not knowing that they're going to give me all these pain meds, you know, so I'm just I'm like, I'm not going, I can't even walk. I mean, some of these people, I don't even know what I said to them. <laughs> well, you'll find out next time you're in work. Well, one was messing with me today. She was like, your words were very colorful. I'm like, I, who knows what came out? <laughs> um, so anyway, <laughs> Uh, but I was able to uh, come home, crash for about four hours, but then wake up and watch American Mary. So uh, that was nice. I watched it on the big screen, which I don't get a chance to do all the time. And uh, uh, I've heard about this movie for a long time, but obviously I've never seen it because I've never seen anything. Uh, this <laughs> yeah. came out in 2012 and stars Catherine Isabel. And if you don't know her, you probably do if you're a horror fan. Uh, she's been in uh, Freddy vs. Jason, and then most notably, the entire Ginger Snaps uh, trilogy, franchise trilogy. Yeah. Um, do you think they'll ever remake that movie? I don't know. I think it captured, you know, the message and stuff pretty well, like back then. Well, I Hollywood always wants more. Yeah, they yeah. might eventually. I don't know. <laughs> It'd be cool if they did a reunion movie, like a like a four. Yeah, if they did something like Scream did, where it's like a remakening or whatever. <laughs> remakening. So they um, you know, they would bring the new characters, old characters, back to kind of introduce our new characters and stuff like that. I think that could work, but it's not needed. Yeah. So I I knew nothing about this movie other than the uh, the front of the cover. And a long time ago, there was this horror podcast I listened to that's not around anymore. But I loved it. It was one of my first podcasts I listened to, and uh, it was just two guys <laughs> talking like this. And they I remember them talking about it. And one of them loved Catherine Isabel. Who doesn't? I mean. This movie's a good way to get a good look at her in some cases. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so I didn't know much about it. What was your experience in, uh, in seeing this the first time? I assume you've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it two other times, I want to say. I want to say it was one of the ones I watched when I first had gotten Netflix. Because before mm -hmm. there were 500 streaming services, Netflix kind of had everything on it. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> like everything, which was nice because... That's how I watch like VHS. That's how I watch this. Uh, just other horror stuff that like now you got to subscribe to some fourth thing that's been passed down four times. Some company that got the rights back to their thing and they're starting a new streaming service or whatever. But uh, I watched on there and then I, I bought it because I had listened to it. Somebody else reviewed on a podcast too. And I was like, wait, was that movie good? So then I bought it again and rewatched it. Now I watched it the third time, and now I'm here to tell you what I think of the movie. <laughs> um, so it's directed and written by the Soska sisters. Yep. Who this is their second debut film? Second debut, second <laughs> film, and their debut film was a Dead Hooker in a Trunk. And I always heard about that movie and never was, never, um, never saw it. Uh, but I did see read some trivia. I think for this movie, their parents, like... They funded it. Like, they're they're yeah, producers they, on it. Yeah, they, like, sold their house or something. Like, they, yeah, they they were the big part of the reason why this movie got made. And it's funny because I just, I think this movie should be better talked about or more talked about. I'd say more talked about. Um... I mean, but even when you hear people, I don't know, I don't really hear anybody talk about it, but I mean, I just assume that people either don't like it or don't think about it or whatever, and I, I think that's unfair, and I'm, I mean, I don't think the movie's perfect by any means, but I think Catherine Isabel is amazing in it. I think that's there great. are some really good side characters in this movie, man. Um, uh Betty Boop is my. F I want a movie just of her. Yeah, yeah, like, she's she's something great. Um, and then Lance, even I think his name's Lance, the bar owner. Yeah, like the the bodyguard the or whatever. Oh, the bouncer guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The bouncer guy. He was awesome. Yeah, he was cool. He was a cool character. Um. So, 
not knowing anything about this movie, I thought it was like, I mean, I thought it was a serial killer, sort of like doctor serial killer thing. And it's really not at all. Um, I mean, we get Catherine Isabel playing Mary Mason, and she is uh, a medical, a med student. And then um, something awful happens to her. And it, it, she's looking for money, and she kind of dives into this body modification world. Yeah, so, I mean, we're introduced to her trying to get money, basically, to pay her student loans, because that's yeah. who calls on the phone. Um, and she, she takes up, like, an ad, goes to a strip. You, you find out it's, like, a burlesque or, like, a strip club. And it kind of reminded me, like, of a mafia thing where you're, like, our, our doc's out. We gotta just somebody sew him up in the back or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it just reminded me of something like that. Um, and she does. And well, it's funny because, I mean, there's a couple of scenes in this movie where it takes a little bit out. I mean, she takes her resume to this place, which <laughs> I mean, that doesn't totally take me out. But even he's like, what the hell? And so that's how he knows that she's a medical student. Yeah. I feel like it could have been brought up more organically. But but he calls her later. Yeah. And has a favor for her to do. Yeah, and then it's funny because the Betty Boop character is like, oh, yeah, I got that. She's like, how did you know I was a doctor? She's like, well, I saw your resume. <laughs> yeah, 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 the resume keeps coming back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that's kind of funny, yeah. Yeah, but the body mod stuff is pretty interesting for sure. And I like it. It turns it, into Nip Tuck in a way, like a little bit through it. It feels like Nip Tuck, yeah. uh, which I love that show. Yeah. Um, and that show probably had to be somewhat of an inspiration to this. Probably. Um, that was a weird show. But it was great. I mean, I watched the first, like, three or four seasons religiously. And then I kind of fell off. But uh, I loved it. I loved the characters. And, uh, you know, it's kind of sort of the same thing um, in, in if you bend, bend it a little bit. Yeah. But... Um, I mean, it's it's gorier than I thought it would be, but then less violent than I thought it would be. Like, I thought it would be more, like, killing. And yeah. It's not really. No, no. At one point, she kind of snaps there at the end. Um, no, but she kills. And people die. But, I mean, like, um, you know, it's just that's not the main focus of it. No, no. It's, it's her just kind of you know, taking on a career essentially on her strengths because she does so good within the body mod community. Yeah. So she, she gets, so we won't, I don't know. Do you want to ruin the whole movie? Who cares? I don't, I don't know. It's uh, 10 years old. I mean, so, so something, something awful happens to her by a medical, by a doctor. And, um, I thought in many cases, Catherine Isabel played like, every emotion perfect like she goes through a few emotions you know as far as like trauma traumatized and then scared uh at a few days after she sews that guy up and then uh, vengeful when we find out that she the, she never actually killed the doctor yeah she just kept him around and that's how she practiced her uh body, body surgeries yeah yeah so um so yeah, so so she she uh, she starts taking these jobs and people come in to to just split their tongue or or whatever. And there's one time somebody wanted a piercing or something, and she yeah. was like, "Fuck a piercing! I ain't doing a piercing." Yeah. Like, yeah, she like, "Let's get in there, throw this guy out." I feel like this movie really should have been like a trilogy and like the origin should have been like her getting comfortable and all that, and then the middle should have been her you know, doing, doing great and all that. And then the end be the finale. Um, it all crammed into one movie kind of is a bummer. And just that we never really get anything from Mary again, although they've apparently been trying to get a TV show off the ground. Hmm. I didn't know that, but like you said, we already had Nip Tuck. We don't need, 
American Mary. So it's Nip Tuck and it's Dexter. It, it felt very Dexterish. Yeah. You know, because um, she was taking like bad people and whatever. Yeah. And so it, so people were like, it's fine. You're, they're bad, you know. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I, I think Catherine as well steals the show. I really, you know, she never gets naked in this movie, but there is a dance scene that, my God. Yeah. It's just yeah. as good as if she got naked. That's true. And then, <laughs> uh, you know, like you were saying with the characters in this movie, the, the uh, not the bouncer Lance, but the other guy, the owner of the bar is kind of Billy. Like in love with her. Yeah. And like fantasizes about her and stuff. Um, so that's why we get that scene. Right. And, you know, I was telling you, I thought maybe him kind of losing it would have been a better choice than what we got at the end. Cause I know that's something we'll focus on me and you talking about what we thought about that ending. Um, but yeah, you know, overall, we get this the story of her and kind of her career path of how it's kind of taken off and what what she's turning into doing it. But also, we get a detective that shows up, um, and he's kind of like, "Hey, you know, we can't find this guy. We know you're a student, and he was kind of mean to you." So she's well, she it's not just like, her. It turns out a bunch of the medical students. Yeah, it was a bunch of medical students and two doctors that would have like mad, I think he said like crazy sex parties or something like that. Well, crazy parties that they forced people to have sex with. Basically. Yeah. 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 You know who knows about that? Jason. Jason knows all about sex parties because that is our good pal Jason down at the dungeon here in Maryville, Tennessee. If you want to know what the dungeon is, it's the coolest place on the planet. He's got video games, uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, VHS, uh, tarot cards, records, vinyl, baby. Uh, he's even got some laser discs, but also Vinegar Syndrome, Visual Vengeance, uh, anything that comes in. He just got the Martin, uh, whatever region B in, and I think he sold out of that, actually. But if you want anything and you don't live in Maryville, Tennessee, you can go to Southland underscore Dungeon, and you can see all the pics that he puts up there, and it's all things that come into the shop. So if you see something you want, you can just, uh, you know, give him a little ringy dingy and uh, set it up, and, and uh, you can purchase it, and he'll give you a good deal. If you mention Night of the Nerdy Laser podcast, yes, I go down there on almost a daily basis. Uh, I didn't go down there now because I was afraid that my penis would explode, <laughs> but you know, I might go tomorrow. Yeah, um, so yeah, you can check check him out if you live near Maryville, Tennessee. I urge you to come. Come check them out. If you need the address and all that, you can go to southlandbooksandcafe.com. Also, the links are in the notes, as always, of wherever you're watching or listening to this. Yes. He will also be at FrankenCon, which is coming up very soon, June 8th. June 9th and 10th, <laughs> with a pre-show kickoff on the 8th. Uh, I don't know if you know about Frank and Con Jeff, but it's this really cool thing that these three dudes are doing. Uh, <laughs> it is a hard convention that me, Corey, and Matt have been putting on for one year, and this is our second year. Yes. So we've got big things lined up. We've got Tom Matthews coming in, CJ Graham, Felissa Rose, Susan Baclini, uh, Brian Bremer will be there. James Obar, the creator of The Crow, frankencontn.com will get you all the information. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram under the same letters. Nice. Nice. Um, so, I, should I buy this movie? I'm, I'm thinking about buying this movie. Digital. Just buy it on digital? Yeah, I wouldn't Why? say it's worth owning on physical. I don't... Uh, that does. I'm not saying I don't like the movie, but I don't. I, it's not one that I, I'm going to go back and watch a lot. Yeah, I mean, I would watch it again. I guess. Um, yeah, just watch it on Tubi. 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Um, I bought the Dale, Tucker and Dale versus Evil on Blu-ray. I told you. Yeah, and you said, it and I haven't watched it yet. But on been. the Blu-ray, the Tucker and Dale are Evil is on there. Yeah. <laughs> I paid more for it used at McKay's than I did if I went to Amazon. Really? Yeah, it kind of sucks. But anyway, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I but that's, that. what, that's what you get for supporting. Like people are like, why does everybody go to Amazon? Well, hell, they're five dollars cheaper than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, and it was new, and it would have been new. <laughs> yeah, that's uh... um. Price but I want to see the Tucker and Dale are evil, and I and I will um I'll try to get back to you on on one of these episodes, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, because I think that's really fun. Okay, so let's uh, veer towards the end here. Um, what I I mean I I like the movie, I really do. I do think the end sort of ruins it in 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 a way. But the more I get to thinking about it. So basically what happened, I mean, basically we, Mary dies. <laughs> yes. Spoiler. But I mean, she gets killed by one of the clientele's husbands. Client, Yeah. And uh, I just feel like it would have been better if it was somebody that we knew. Yeah. And I think... Like, that we didn't know that that was her husband. I mean, I think the detective would have been a good choice. Yeah, I said I the think, bar owner. I think the bar owner would have made sense too, but not in the sense of, of, of what I. Here's what I like about it. So when Betty Boop, we call her Betty Boop because they call her Betty Boop, but she's trying to make herself look like the cartoon character Betty Boop. Yeah, and she's a great character in this movie. I just, I love her to death. Well, she refers somebody to to Mary that wants to, she describes it in like, she just wants to be like blank, like a doll. Yeah, she basically wants to be turned into a doll. Because dolls are still pretty. People think dolls are pretty the way they are. So we basically, she basically wants her nipples cut off and as much sewn up as possible. Right. Um, so flash forward, um, her husband doesn't like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so that, that is the, the killer of Mary. And, uh, I, I mean, it's fine. I, I, I dig the fact that it was that, you know, Mary loved the body modification so much and she did it and she was good and people liked her, but then, you know, the repercussion of that was, you know, her untimely death. Yeah. So for me, I mean, it's it's fine. Whatever the death at the end and the killer that we get, fine. What I for the hour and like forty five or hour forty two or whatever yeah. the runtime is, it's a little long for not a lot happening. So we get, you know, we get we don't get as many body modifications as I remembered. So mm. we get, you know, we get our first girl the one she sews up and all that. Then we get like, you know, we get that little montage of people taking pictures. So yeah. like the tongue split lady, the guy with the horns on his head, and yeah. then we get the Saska sisters as the twins that get sewn together. Well, I don't, that, so that's the part of me that is like, okay, so that's not medically accurate the way you did this. What did she switch their arms or something? Because they wanted to fill each other's. Okay, so if you're gonna, yeah, yeah, they switched their left arms, which, which I, I'm fine with. But she cut them off here. <laughs> That's not how it works. No, <laughs> she cut them off like right above the elbow and between <laughs> the shoulder. Like, I mean, I'm not sure that the whole damn thing would work anyway. Yeah, <laughs> but that damn sure don't. <laughs> And they just pass it like you just see them passing it over the girls. I, I mean, it's fine. I get you know why they did it like that, but just it's kind of dumb. But I wanted to see more. I mean, they could have did so many different things. Uh, you know, there is a huge body mod 
community, but there's, you know, they, it's a movie. They could have did whatever they want as like a body mod. And, you know, we kind of don't get a whole lot of stuff, but I get it. You got to work on makeup and props and do all that stuff if you're going to do it. And I don't know. I mean, it was, it was a in story the about house. Mary, you know? Yeah. Uh, you you just wanted to see the the twin cops in Hellraiser uh, <laughs> four? I I don't know. You know who I'm talking about? I've only seen the first three Hellraisers. Oh, I think it's four. Uh, you have to look it up. It's the best. It, it's it's like it's these two like brothers, and uh, I mean I don't know. He says something and like something gets put between them and they their heads start to wrap around each other and it's great. I guess Don't I skip four, those. dude. Watch four. Bloodline is good. Is that the Paul Rudd? <laughs> is he in everything? Or no, not Paul Rudd. Uh, <laughs> the, the other dude, the stupid... Is Adam... Uh, what's his name? I don't know. I obviously don't know. Um, I mean... <laughs> so Hellraiser is the one in space. Yes. It, if you or bloodline is the one in space, that's what what people say. But I mean, it's not really. I mean, they they it kind of goes all over. It's like back in medieval times and Adam Scott is in. Oh, it. that's who I'm thinking of. I got <laughs> not Paul Rudd. Fucking Paul Rudd. <laughs> Who's Adam Scott? Is that Parks and Rec? Yeah, he's the guy from Parks and Rec. I don't like that show. Yeah, I used to. Another one of those shows I watched on Netflix. So, <laughs> um. Anyway, I mean, I kind of get you. I, I understand the, the the point, but I mean, I think you know that's just not the story. You know, the body modification was a point of the story, but it wasn't the whole point of the story. So, you know, they had to mix in. Um, the connections that Mary was making in the community and just around her. Yeah, no, I get it. And I mean, the only, the only reason I even brought it up was because, you know, with the runtime that long, they could have fit some more in there. I mean, they could have shaved off 15 minutes and it probably would have been fine. What was that whole part about her, like, going to the strip club and, like, beating up that girl in the bathroom? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Because she's like, you were sucking the wrong dick <laughs> to like that other girl. She's like, they're all afraid of you. I mean, I guess it's the point of Elsie? like, she liked that guy too. Like, like they kind of had this thing going on, but not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that, so that happened early on. So I'm still thinking it's like a serial killer thing. But then, like when they do that montage of people, it's like this chipper music, and it's like this like punk rock kind of thing. I'm like, what's happening? Yeah. But I I dig it. I I think people should watch it. Um, I don't. I couldn't find a box office, a budget, really anything about the movie. I mean, it went straight to video, so. Yeah, I mean, so like you said, their first like student film or whatever was the dead hooker in a trunk. And then we got this and then it, they turned that into See No Evil 2 with Kane. Uh, I've heard it's movie. not good, but I've only seen the first one. I want to say Danielle Harris is in it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think the second one does have people in it. And the Sa Saska sisters were close. You know, they were red hot. And so there was a lot of buzz around the movie, but then it came out and I just heard yeah, it. Yeah, and then since I, then, I think they've done what, like Rabid? Um, which I want to see. I don't know anything about it. You, have you seen Cronenberg's no. Rabbit? Oh, okay. I knew, it was, I knew it was based. I mean, I knew it was kind of based on that. Yeah, it's uh, it's not bad. They're still doing stuff, and they act, too. So, I mean, it's not like they're gone. I mean, I think they're working. I mean, Rabid was just, like, 2019, I think. Yeah, they did that show on Sci-Fi, or it was syndicated on Sci-Fi called Elevator. Oh, yeah, it was a game show. It was like a horror game show, which was kind of interesting because, you know, we didn't really have anything like that, but I don't think they were it... The, they were the hosts. Yeah. I think that went on for like two years, two seasons. So that was a good chunk of time where you're probably not working on anything else. Yeah. 
probably. And I, I, right. think, I think one of the reasons this doesn't get talked about as well as their other stuff is just because I think people are kind of split on them in general. Yeah, but isn't it funny how like Ty West gets talked about now? I mean, he well, didn't. no, no, he got talked about before, but it was a split way. But people talked about him. They had an opinion on him. It's almost like they don't have an opinion on the Saska sisters. I want to say, I can't remember exactly, but I want to say they, you know, they would say stuff and it would kind of make horror people mad. And I don't know. I don't, I don't get involved in that kind of stuff. So it's just. I, I don't I don't have any problem with anything they've done that I've seen. Like I don't have any problem with anything they've said, but I don't also I don't like follow a bunch of like people on Twitter or social media either to yeah. like see them say that stuff. So, you know, people come out and they're like, Oh, did you hear that? I'm like, Nope. <laughs> and I enjoy my life a lot better, not worried about and stuff. And I'm fine. Leave me I'm alone. I'm doing good. All right. How many out of five body modifications, how many do you give this movie? I give this one a three. Well, oh, that's actually better than I thought you were gonna give it. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't have a problem with it. I, it's it's entertaining. I, I wish, like I said, I wish there was a little bit more like of the body mod stuff. And well, now I feel story. like I have to give it higher because you gave it a three. Because I feel mm, like I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think a, a three is where I was kind of landed, and I, I mean, it's probably like uh, probably really a three and a half, but. And, like, honestly, if that ending had been, like, I believe, to me, if that ending had been the detective, I think I would have put it at a four. Yeah, I mean. I really dug that. The detective really didn't need to be in the movie. No. You could have cut all that crap out, you know. But but there are, there's a lot to like about this movie, and it, it looks really good. And, I mean, if nothing else, Catherine Isabel is amazing. And she's really solid. Apparently, she went to med school. I mean, at least for some sort of time, and uh, just really got into this role. So, I mean, there's something to be said about that. Yeah, there's a lot to like about it. Um, I urge everybody to watch it. I'm gonna watch Dead Hooker in a Trunk. I think because I've never seen it. Uh, I remember when it came out, and I remember the buzz around it, and I remember that one people liked, um, but nobody talks about that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's just weird. You get in that, stuck in that like echo chamber where people just talk about the same like ten movies and nothing else, and then like the next week comes, and then it's on to the next person they're talking about, and then it just kind of recycles. Like when Rob Zombie was kind of at the you know, not the top of his game, but putting stuff out. People always talk about him like, oh, he's so bad. <laughs> and it's like, he's not. <laughs> he's yeah. not that bad. He just does things his own way. Like, are, is it the right choice? Not necessarily, but I don't. I I don't think I've watched any of his movies where I was like, this, I can't watch it. It's too stupid. You don't like 31. <laughs> 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 Damn it, how'd you know? <laughs> now, so 31 is just one of those weird movies, man. I've only seen it one time. I probably need to watch it again. But Richard Brake is amazing in that movie, and I loved him. But there's just a lot not to like about that movie, I remember. I just remember watching it thinking, what in the hell am I watching? And then <laughs> it ends, and you're like, what the hell? Like, what was any of that? Yeah, he, uh, Rob Zombie could... I don't know what he's, he, I guess he has too much freedom. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Because I mean, you know, with the studio stuff with Halloween, you feel like he didn't have as much freedom as he wants. I mean, he had, he definitely had his freedoms in him, but like at the same time, you got to figure studio execs are kind of like, no, we can't do that. But like he gets his own movie and then he does something like 31 and you're like, yeah, find a happy medium, Rob Zombie. <laughs> like, I think you'd get a lot more traction and like fans if, if you did. I, I still dig Lords of Salem. I don't care what oh, I love use. that movie. I yeah, love it's it. Good. Um, Did you ever see that Waxworks release? It wasn't Waxworks or Mondo. It was like the 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 wooden box that she gets the album in. Oh, they did no. like a replica of it and did the oh, soundtrack awesome. in it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I think I just I was buying records then, but I think I didn't. I, I think I know what you're talking about, but I think I just passed just because the movie. 
I mean, I like it, but I mean, I don't need records. Yes, but do. saying that, I just bought one over the weekend. So. <laughs> What'd you get? The new Ghost album. Oh, yeah. See, I wouldn't do that, but why? I, I'm not a big Ghost fan. I don't. The new album is amazing. I mean, I think most of their other stuff is not that great. I'm but not a big that Ghost new album. Fan. I'm not a big Ice Nine fan. Well, yeah, it's because you're an awful person. I know. When I came out there, you guys were like, check it out. And it was like, stab and kill Ice Nine. And I was like, I'm good on that. <laughs> Turn something else on. <laughs> it wasn't bad, but it's just not something I sit around listening to. I sit around listening to books. So, so that just shows you where I'm at. I'm listening to a book right now. Yeah, what are you listening to? Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. It's because it just sounds of him shooting webs. At people. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I what is the name of it? Uh, very interesting radio for this. Yes, um, I'll tell you what I'm reading Spider Man The Gathering of the Sinister Six. Oh, cool. I like the Sinister Six. I love the Sinister Six. They, they did that it, reboot for Marvel now a little while back. Uh, I really liked it. Oh, but uh, you have to let me know how it is. But I'm uh, I am listening to an X Files book. I don't know, like it, I don't think it has anything to do with the shows. Um, but they did like a seven book run in the '90s. I think the first one was from '94, and it's just called the X Files Goblins or something like that. But it's kind of interesting. I've read a couple others. I know Audible had like an original one where Duchovny and uh, Gillian Anderson came back and like voiced their characters and Skinner oh, was there. Awesome. Yeah, so that one was pretty cool. And then I, so I got those seven because I'm going to try to read through those and listen to the books. But then there were a couple other weird like spinoffs. And then I know they did a season 10 comic book. So oh. I'm going to see if the library has those. That way I don't have to pay for those because that'd be cool. A I, I never saw that, but I mean, I know that they, I've seen the Buffy one and, you know, I've seen some of the others that they've done extensions. Of. I think Dark Horse did most of them. Yeah, I did. Sounds I did cool pick up um, the Buffy Omnibus Volume 1, and then I did get a new another um, comic book called Bloody Chester. And I don't know what it's about exactly, but I think I was listening to Rebecca... Um, McKendry or whatever her name is from Colors of the Dark and all the Fangoria stuff. And mm. uh, she mentioned a couple on an old episode and I was like, mm -hmm, it sounds kind of cool. It's like a, a horror Western type thing. Mm. The animation looked really different. So I was like, I'll give it a try. Um, cool. All right. Well, um, everybody, thanks for listening. As always, you can follow us online at Nerdy Laser at night. Or you can follow me online at Nerdy Laser. At, Jesus. <laughs> Who are you? Where can they find you? <laughs> you can find me at Nerdy Laser. You can find the podcast at Night of the Nerdy Laser on Instagram and Facebook. And you can follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, which is now updated. Thank, thanks, Jeff. Jeff was very mad that his name wasn't included in the description <laughs> of the show. Yeah. Um, Tore me apart. <laughs> Tore me apart, Lisa. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, please. And and feel free to email us at nightofthenerdylaser at gmail.com. You can also support physical media by going to, uh, there's a link that'll be in the show notes. And there's a group on Facebook that just lost a ton of, of, of people. They got, their, they got the board shut down. Apparently some trolls got a hold of them. And like overnight they posted a bunch of, of uh, like porn stuff. And then reported it and got the whole page like gone. It had like 30,000 members. And uh, so now they're rebuilding it. And it's really cool. It's a physical media collector's page. Uh, if you go to the show notes, it'll be in there. And uh, yeah, it's just cool. If you want to see other people's collections, the people sell stuff off, it's just a really cool community. And um, they just need help rebuilding. So. Here we are, rebuilding for 
helping. Yeah. Helping. And, uh, you know, you did mention that you could listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, I think even all the all the podcatchers out there. But if you guys, I, I try to do it every once in a while and post online, but it's so hard to get anybody to do it. I don't know why. But if you guys would just take like 10 seconds out of your day, rate us five stars or don't. I don't care. But five stars because we put out quality content. And just give, right. us a, give a little review. We haven't had a, I don't think we've had a review in almost a year. So. I know, it's sad. Uh, yeah, Apple Podcasts, where we read reviews from, but you can rate us on any anything you listen to, and I'll look around for those reviews too. So uh, please do that. That always helps. Spread the word on Facebook and tell your friends about this show because we love doing it, and we're getting ready to do uh, episode 90. That's going to be uh, like hard television. And yeah. then episode 100, you're not going to want to miss. It's going to be a big, big show that we're starting to work on this week. So um, it's going to be really fun. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And until next time, what should they do, Jeff? They should keep it bloody. Because somebody has to put metal horns in my head and sew me back up. <laughs> I figured they would just get the kidney stone out for you. <laughs> oh, God, do that. Get it out of me. And then put it under my skin like a horn. Oh, just put it under your pillow for the kidney stone fairy to go. <laughs> 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 he doesn't uh, leave you money. He just pees on you. <laughs> Where's my pillow all wet? Oh, the kidney stone fairy visited you. <laughs> uh. <laughs>